G'day, Lawrence here. Funny enough, today's not another day, another poem. I actually found something quite amusing on the internet. Uh, it's a review for, not for me, it's a review I was looking on Amazon. Somebody said something about gummy bears on Facebook, so I decided to look up uh, reviews about gummy bears. And I looked up five kilo gummy bears, or five pound, five kilo, whatever they call them in America. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> and one of the reviews, uh, I think you need to hear it. Uh, it's long, but please listen all the way through. Um, I'll try not to laugh too much. Anyway, it's a uh, gentleman here who did this review on May 2nd, 2016. And the flavor were the gold bears. So let's go through it. I'll set the scene. It was late winter, early spring in Toronto, and the city had just been digging itself out from a late snow season snowstorm. I was heading to Pearson International Airport for a red-eye flight to Amsterdam in order to give the Dutch arm of our company some training on the new software that had been installed. I'm deliberately being vague to prevent my place of work from being linked in any way to the incident that occurred. I had just finished packing, checked the time, and found I was running late. My flight was 7.10pm, and it was now almost 5pm. Cursing softly, I ran out of the car and threw my bag in the trunk, hitting the gas a little harder than usual in my haste to make it to the long-term parking lot as soon as possible. Luckily, traffic was light on the 401, and I made it to the airport in record time, but knew that my chances of making the flight was still at risk if I didn't use my time wisely. I hadn't eaten, lunch, I hadn't eaten since lunch, and I was feeling a bit hungry, my stomach rumbling loudly in protestation, which caused me to look around at the other travellers rushing past me into the busy terminal, mortified that my bodily noises might be heard by others. I briskly checked my watch and decided that I had enough time to grab a quick snack before going through the baggage check and security, and would get something more substantial once I was checked through security. I spotted a vending machine nestled in a relatively low traffic corner of the terminal and rushed over, already pulling out my credit card and mentally assessing what I had been craving for so as to give me time interacting with the machine. Save me time. My eyes scanned the colourful array of confection quickly, coming to rest on a tantalising rainbow-coloured bag of gummy bears, with the simple white and red logo Haribo emblazoned across the bag in what appeared to be a slightly tweaked Helvetica rounded font. Now I'd paused here, I'd pause, I, I, now I'd, I'd pause here in the story for a moment to underscore the importance of making proper choices. I was hungry. When you're hungry, you should eat food. Food is defined as a nutritious substance that people consume to maintain life. This is what food is. These days, the definition of the word food has been bastardized and the meaning has been broadened to include a variety, veritably any material that can be digested or rather chewed and swallowed without causing death or severe illness. Haribo sugar-free gummy bears are not food. Emphasizing the not. They're, <laughs> they aren't even from this planet. Imagine the origins being conceived in a boardroom in hell by a top team of creative pain administrators with senior level demons rubbing their hands together in ghoulish delight as hell's chief chemist slowly lifts the veil on their new creation. The point here being, I made a very, very, very poor choice. I pushed the button and the vending machine ejected the brightly colored bag into my awaiting hands. I'd always liked gummy bears. They were bright, but rather innocuous. They weren't overly sweet so as to overcome as so as to become cloying and of course each candy came in the visage of a rather happy docile bear reminiscent of the picture one's mind eye one's, one's mind's eye holds in all the anthro <laughs> anthropomorphic bears from yogi to winnie the way i figured it i was taking a bit of a holiday from life so i could relax my fastidiously regimented daily schedule a little to allow for some frivolity after all I was going to be in Amsterdam come morning with 16 hours to kill before I had to be training the Dutch employees. Maybe I would take a trip down to one of the coffee shops in the red light district and really let my hair down. No, I wouldn't do that. I would see that area of the city from the bus as I went to the hotel where I'd eat at the hotel restaurant and drink sparkling water. So I'd better enjoy the gummy bears, my one extravagance to commemorate my break from routine. Now it starts to get interesting. I joined the queue at the KLM line, which was mercifully short, 
most likely because of all of the passengers for my flight had already been checked through as the flight was scheduled to depart in an hour. I checked my watch again, frowned and absent-mindedly opened the bag of Haribo sugar-free gummy bears and began to munch on them as the line slowly advanced. <clears throat> to be fair, they tasted fine, just like every other manufacturer's brand of the colourful candy, and they were sugar-free to boot. This is what made the whole incident that followed so baffling. If they had tasted off or different, I most likely wouldn't have continued to shovel them into my mouth absent-mindedly while daydreaming about what I would order to eat from room service in my hotel in Amsterdam. As I gave the attendant my e-ticket, she weighed my bags. The first of the pains began in my stomach. I thought nothing of it at first, chalking it up to the fact that I needed something more substantial than gummy worms to tackle my hunger. Worms now. But over the course of the next five minutes, the shooting pain began to come in more rapid succession. At this point, I had my boarding pass printed and rubbing my stomach a little. I proceeded to security. I briefly entertained the thought of trying to find a restroom before going through security. But at that point, my discomfort, I, the discomfort was manageable and I didn't think it would get any worse, particularly not within the amount of time it would take to clear security. I joined the line and started fishing for my passport to present to the agent uh, present to the agent checking tickets. I felt a thin sheen of sweat break out on my forehead and underarms, <clears throat> and my features flushed for a moment as a wave of heat washed over me. It's beginning. <laughs> it was only, I didn't pay much attention. Uh, heat as going through security always caused me great anxiety and I chalked it up to pre-flight jitters. It was only as I stood face to face with the agent and handed her my passport and ticket that I had a glimpse of the agony that was about to begin. I felt like time rippled for a moment, as if my consciousness buckled, so intense was the pain that fired through my bowels. I grimaced sp spastically and emitted a low moan, and I felt myself take an involuntary step sideways. Stars shot through my head briefly and my vision blurred and then snapped back into focus. The agent was staring at me with slight consternation and asked me if I was alright. I pulled myself together, stood up straight and declared that I was fine mortified that I had had a lapse of decorum, not only in public, but at the security clearance at the airport. As I fumbled off, <laughs> as I fumbled off my belt to go through <clears throat> the metal detector, the pain in my stomach increased and I practically had to sit on the floor to take my shoes off, terrified of what would happen if I bent at the middle to do it. It was becoming increasingly more evident to me that this wasn't just a stomach ache. No, this was something much worse. As a child, I had a bout of diarrhea after a trip to Mexico with my family. I remember the feeling of nausea that swept through uh, before my child self had surrendered to the gas pains and parked myself on the toilet for an hour, shitting until I felt like I didn't have any bones left. And that was how I was feeling now with, <laughs> with several key weaknesses, uh, differences. <clears throat> the pain was worse. The sense of impending bowel movement was so formidable, it gave me temporary amnesia and it took all of my willpower, all of it, to clench my butt cheeks together to prevent my sphincter from exploding. There's a, there's a vision. A sudden shock of pain racked my body and I wondered if it was going to give birth to the Tasmanian Devil, the crazy fever-induced image of said cartoon animal chasing Bugs Bunny through a, a, the splashy volcanic shit kettle that was my stomach, caused me to elicit a short, maniacal, maniacal bark of laughter as I approached the metal detector, a wild distant look in my eyes, sweating now beginning to pour off me like a long distance runner in Kenya. The security agent on the other side of the detector shot a quick glance over to her co-worker who narrowly, who narrowed her eyes and made a subtle movement towards his holster. My breathing became uneven as I entered the metal detector and I realised with alarm that I'd taken off my socks without even registering it, and one of my shirt tails was untucked at the front. I held my breath, my eyes bulging dangerously from my head as the machine scanned me, as I shakily moved forward towards the agent for a pat down. My stomach began to elicit sounds that can only be described as otherworldly. It started off a, a sort of bubbly sound heard from afar and grew in pitch and intensity at an alarming rate. My jaw dropped in shock as what I can only describe as the sound of an agonizing wailing alley cat in heat with a persistent Doppler effect added to its voice emitted from some nether region of my intestines. The officer's eyes widened in alarm and she kept her eyes glued to my stomach as she thoroughly patted me down 
As she reached my shins, I felt my innards suddenly expand and plummet towards my rectum. With cat-like reflexes, I squeezed my sphincter shut. And what seemed like nanoseconds of spare, I knew, I knew, that if I didn't get to a bathroom immediately, I would shit myself. With her <laughs> with Herculean effort and all of the strength that I could muster, I forced my butt cheeks together, knowing that one false move would open the floodgates. I began to walk like a duck, trying to remain as inconspicuous as possible, not even caring now what other people were seeing in front of them. A dishevelled, barefoot, 40-year-old businessman, red-faced and bulgy-eyed, sweating profusely, shaking slightly, and walking without bending his knees. With single-minded intensity, I grabbed my carry-on shoes and socks from out of the plastic tub that had passed the x-ray ins inspection, and without putting anything back on, I turned on my heels with the intention of finding the nearest bathroom and slowly dying there, one squirt at a time. <coughs> but that's not what happened. I turned to go and found myself staring at three armed agents who stopped me and asked if I would follow them. Why? What's the matter? I stammered, wincing slightly at the act of at the, <laughs> as the act of speech seemed to strain the tenuous and extremely fragile truce that I had negotiated between my bowels and the tempest that raged within. I have to go to the bathroom right now, I pleaded. Just follow us, please, they said, leaving no room for argument. The other travellers, clearing the security check, stared with curiosity and revulsion at the spectacle unfolding before them, whispering amongst themselves and hurrying to pack up their belongings as to get as far away from me as possible, no doubt assuming that the airport had nabbed me, uh, had nabbed some sort of domestic terrorist. If I hadn't been feverishly trying to hold back the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, I like, likely would have died of shame. Oh, it's going to get even better. With each step I took towards that room that they ushered me into, I felt, <laughs> I felt that my legs would give way. I marvelled at how strong the human could be. Marvelled at what was essentially patching a hole in the Hoover Dam with bubble gum could actually be sustained indefinitely. Maybe I would make it through this ordeal after all. The room that brought me in was an examination room. I had pretty much stopped registering details of my environment as my consciousness closed off all but the absolute necessary functions. Breathing. Ability to walk. But I snapped back to reality when I heard the snap of rubber. The slow dawning of realisation poked through my agony and stoic resolve as I, as I turned to face my, an agent drawing rubber gloves. Sir, we are going to perform a cavity search on you. A young, fresh-faced agent stated in a firm but emotionless voice. His short, cropped, blonde hair was immaculate, and for a crazy moment, I wondered if he was an actor, and this was all some sort of elaborate practical joke, done to amuse bored kids watching YouTube. Hope you're still watching. <laughs> he must have taken my tortured silence for resistance, because he looked at me sharply and said, lower your pants and underwear, please, and face the desk. Panic started to grip me in its icy grasp, and the sudden adrenaline threatened to destroy my sphincter's bulwarks bulwarks and rend my anus in, t in two. <coughs> I inhaled sharply and with a pained gasp I doubled in my efforts to clench my cheeks together. Sir, please, I begged deferring to this kid in an act of desperation. I have to go to the bathroom. You can follow me into the stall if you need to, but I had some bad Haribo sugar-free gummy bears and now I feel like, but they'd stopped listening and smirked at each other, two of the other agents. A tall, dark-haired female and a shorter, balding, fat man, looking away from me, and all, and I could also, <laughs> and I could see them shaking a little as they stifled their laughs. Sir, face the wall, put your hands on the desk, and spread your cheeks. The young agent stated, a lopsided grin on his face. But I began to protest, and then a fresh shock of pain forced me to stop and lean on the table for support. In an ungodly howl, as an ungodly howling rose from my stomach. Something between the, by, the dying moans of a woolly mammoth and the sound of bubble wrap popping underwear. I exhaled, I exhaled shakily and my focus began to narrow as I rallied for the final battle. Shaking uncontrollably and sweat literally raining down on the onto the tabletop in front of me, I turned to face the wall and heard a meek childlike voice pleading from somewhere in the room. Please, it said. And then again, please. From somewhere within my mind, recognised that this sound had issued from me. Although my consciousness had now begun to separate from my body and I held my breath and prayed to God for strength. He probably has some heroin or something up there, 
that opened up the female guard. <laughs> female guard said as part of me that hadn't escaped into the ether yet acknowledged that she was behind me to the left. Probably high as a kite. Look at him, she said. The shorter guard agreed with a snort off to my right. Spread your cheeks, the young agent said, his voice directly behind me and lower than the other two, and bend over. <clears throat> please God, please God, please God, please God, please God, I whispered in a desperate, maniacal mantra, not even aware of my surroundings anymore. I felt like <laughs> I felt like I was lost in an opium fog with half-snatched images and sounds filtering through to create a nonsensical version of reality. Another volley of pain tore through me and I involuntarily leaned forward over the desk. My focus completely narrowed now to a spot on the wall two feet in front of me. A curious imperfection in what seemed to be whitewashed stone wall. It was a dark blotch about five millimetres long and shaped like a smiling bear. A yellow dancing bear. No. A green bear. No. Red. It was all the colours of the rainbow. My God, it was beautiful. It just took something as simple as a slight breeze to trigger Armageddon. That's all, no trumpets, no fanfare, no fire raining from the heaven, no dogs and cats living together in harmony, no finger on the button, so to speak, no prophet to predict it, no nothing. As I stared at the rainbow bear smiling and dancing front of, in front of me, my mouth agape, drooling, eyes glazed and bloodshot, face coated with a sheen of sweat, I heard the softest sound, an exultation from a young agent behind me, at the same instant, the warm air in his breath feather across my butt cheeks. For a moment, maybe less, maybe a split second, even a nanosecond, I felt the presence of God there with me in that room as neurons began to misfire at a blinding rate, never ending bristle and muscles twitch. Reflexively, I stood on the brink with one foot hovering over the edge and then without a step, I found myself plummeting. With a sound like an extra large plastic ketchup bottle being run over by a mat trunk, my sphincter released. The pressure of the blast pushed me, <laughs> pushed me high. <laughs> pushed me high into the desk and the legs of the desk screeched as they scraped across the floor. My body remained rigid for a moment as I experienced a relief that can only be described as orgasmic in its purity. My eyes rolled back in my head and my tongue lolled out of my head like a half retarded dog and I emitted a low sustained groan then that grew in pitch as the filthy torrent pushed its way out of my body. <laughs> Tremors racked my body and I must have looked like a fish out of water with an endless stream of <laughs> with an endless stream of shit flying out of its ass. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, other sounds and sensations started filtering now as my consciousness began consciousness began to materialise once more. The muffled scream of a dungeon filled with prisoners near death radiated from my stomach. The rushing sound of litres of liquid trying to escape through an aperture too small to accommodate it all at the same time. The omnipresent sound of chunky liquid splattering against the hard surface with great force. The high-pitched screaming of a woman's voice calling out to God. Another voice sobbing uncontrollably, <laughs> imploring to make it stop. And my own ecstatic monotone wail. Oh, when the ideal had eventually run its course, I was left panting for breath and wobbly-legged, half crying, half laughing with relief barely lucid and feeling as if I had birthed an elephant. My colon felt like someone had poured chilli sauce all over it and then sent in a colony of fire ants to eat it. <laughs> Through my sobs I heard the sound of dripping like when the sprinklers are eventually turned off after an office fire or after a thunderstorm when the willow that overhangs a pond continues to rain down long after the sky has stopped. From behind me the the sobbing continued, and I heard someone trying to speak into a walkie-talkie, but nonsensical words were all that the man could speak, which sounded like the ravings of a lunatic. Uh, uh, with great relief, I slowly pulled off myself off the table, legs trembling, my stomach eliciting, eliciting one last sound, a loud, prolonged gas bubbling that eerily resembled a pig orgasm. 
I slowly turned my hand to head to survey the devastation and in that instant if I had a pencil or some other sharp object I probably would have gouged my eyes out in revulsion. <laughs> and the smell the smell was enough to drive a man insane it was the stench of rotting potatoes mixed with sulfur and ammonia cooked in a broth of chicken feces and left to age for two weeks in a yeasty stew at the bottom of a french outhouse oh dear after half a whiff of the ghoulish brine i really stopped breathing through my nose but the taste was to remain in the back of my throat for months to come the young agent had taken the brunt of the foul witch's brew, and at first I couldn't process what I was seeing. I thought somehow the young blonde kid had been spirited away and replaced by a brown god. <laughs> <laughs> or an ATV writer that had spent the better part of a day driving through every mud puddle he could find after a directional downpour. With some degree of compartmentalization, I came to realize that for some unfathomable reason, this kid hadn't moved or hadn't been able to move through the entire fecal deluge. He had weathered the entire assault head on like some sort of hero from Greek mythology. <laughs> I'd given the poor schmuck a one man shit bouquet that would make a Brazilian pornographer wretch with disgust and he was still in the same position he must have been from the moment of first impact. <laughs> oh, oh dear. I, I tried to comprehend how he must be feeling, what he must be going through psychologically, but it became evident very quickly that he, that he had become very broken. No doubt forced so deeply within himself once the fire hose had been turned on that there was little to no hope of him ever coming back from it, certainly not with that extensive psychotherapy or a lobotomy. Uh, I looked beyond his quivering, catonic, crouched form to see a perfect outline of him cut out of the white wall behind him, either side filled in with a dripping, opaque layer of alternatively, alt alternately pulpy and runny fecal stew. I noticed two quivering masses on either extremes of the room and realised they were the humanoid in form, although the cat walling that was coming from them of these broken creatures was just a blubbering gibberish. And this was the tableau that was burnt into my eyes for eternity. Needless to say, I missed the flight. In fact, the next week was a blur. I have vague recollections of an army of hazmat clad figures looming through the brown landscape of the soiled room. The sloppy sounds of rubber boats squelching in puddles of fetid detritus uncontrollable wailing and animal-like sounds issuing from the mouths of creatures that had been traumatized beyond their capacity for being put back together. The complete loss of sensation from my waist down as I was rolled through the room on a waterproof gurney, its wheels struggling to surf on top of the shit soaked floor. I spent a week or so in the hospital enclosed in a well-ventilated sealed room with suited doctor coming in for an hour, in on the hour to monitor my vital signs as they tried to rehydrate my body. I'd apparently expelled every available drop of water from my body that was possible to sustain life without, to sustain life without for a short period of time. All my clothes were incinerated in the hospital's crematorium and a soiled bag of Haribo sugar gummy free bears was never recovered. This is my story. It's inconceivable to think that this kind of product can be sold legally and be misrepresented as food. I was lucky, I survived. But as for the families of the survivors and the survivors themselves, they will forever live with the trauma of the events that took place at Pearson International Airport on that snowy day in April 2013. Now, I'm not going to say anything about the said product because I can't give you any comment about it as I've never had them but I have had gummy bears before but they've never done that to me before I don't think I've had Haribo I had a different brand when I lived in the States but oh my god that guy should write he should write novels that is brilliant and it is there if you want to read it in its entirety on amazon.com so please feel free to go ahead have a read have a laugh and I'll tell you what in the days that we're having these days, don't we all need a good laugh? Oh, anyway, oh, watery eyes from the. Oh, anyway, um, 
<laughs> leave a comment below tell me what you think have a read of it yourself um and i will be back in a couple of days with actual an actual poem so until then uh thanks for the Take the time to listen to this if you've stayed for the entirety. Uh, subscribe, and I will see you all soon in a couple of days. Remember to smile, doesn't hurt, and people appreciate it. Take care, stay safe, elbow, fist, toe, whatever way you do it, just don't shake hands, no hugging, and keep yourself safe. Till then, take care, bye.